Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm good, Mike. Hey, uh, hey, uh, welcome, uh, ML and Tom, welcome you to the first The Last of the Nerdum, the podcast where we warp into the world of film, comics, and all things nerdy from every angle. Whether it's your first time experiencing a story or your hundredth revisit, we're here to talk about it, about it all. Uh, this week, we're pulling into the iconic Guy Fox, or we're putting on, pulling on the Guy Fox mask and uh, dri- diving into the uh, 20, 2006 film V for Vendetta. Based on the graphic novel by Alan Moore and David Lloyd, this dystopian political thriller has become a cultural touchstone. Known for its bold comp- commentary on freedom, oppression, and the power of ideas. We get ready. We're going to unpack the, the themes, the performance, the unforgettable visuals, and of course, discussing how this movie is still, re- re- still resonates today. Uh, so whether you're a diehard fan or a first-time viewer, you're in the right place for an in-depth look at this modern classic. Get ready as we unmask the truth as we talk all things V for Vendetta, only here on the first, the last, the nerdum. How you doing, Tom? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I I think I sent you the link. Uh, Amazon was selling the uh, graphic novel with the uh, mask, and I thought, oh man, I, I should have bought the mask. You know, got it so I could put on the mask. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe got it, got it for for both of us. But uh, but no. <laughs> yeah. So we we missed all... out on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll bring that up here in a little bit uh, when we get into the into the bona fides here. But of course, we are. This is the very first post election um, episode, and uh, we've had this big four year thing done. Uh, we we kind of joked around, and uh, we had uh, we watched Civil War uh, last week. We covered that. It was very very uh-huh. f- one of my favorite uh, new favorite films, uh, move, movie of the uh-huh. year in my opinion for that. Uh, and and you help uh, your own views, but. I did want uh-huh. to kind of spend a little bit of time and uh, kind of just go into that real quick and, and kind of share some fun things that we didn't get to that because we're done with it. Because you and I both did this. Everybody did this. Um, they, they looked at a bunch of maps <laughs> and talk, <laughs> and saw a lot of people talk about uh, talk about uh, what uh, what 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 happened where and, and all that. And um, the one I had found it over here. But uh, Alex Garland, it was like a map. That kind of showed like what the different alliances were, you know, like in this fictional mm-hmm. world. And I just, I just thought it was funny because you had, you know, California and Texas teaming up, and then you had a whole bunch of chunk of states down here, you know, and all this stuff. Uh, it, it was just mm-hmm. kind of fun. Uh, but mm-hmm. with, which uh, brings me to my next thing. Uh, we covered it last week. Uh, I we got a very good response for it, so thank you very much. Yes, sixty nine. Uh, yeah, yeah, noise, uh, right? So, uh, noise. That's the requ- required for that. And then uh, the only thing we're missing is like a four twenty reference. So there you go, kids. We're, we're all we're all we're all hip to the game. But uh, all joking aside, I really love this episode that we did. Uh, uh-huh. I did have to fix my levels. It was a thing. Uh, but uh, uh, it is what it is. But um, they go check that out. Uh, six days ago, we did it uh, last week. Uh, we were really proud of that one. Uh, and it also was just fun. Um, and I think mm-hmm. we kind of aired on the side of like, well, I guess it depends on wh- where you're coming from. But this could be a horror film. Um, but it certainly definitely kept my captivate. It captivated me enough. Uh, and then I also wanted to kind of plug our one before that, which was our Halloween one, uh, which is very satisfying as well. Very fun uh, Halloween mm-hmm. movie to, uh, you know, just, classic to put on when you're in that vibe um if that strikes you whether you're in halloween Holly, uh, halloween <laughs> season or not um also did very well so thank you uh, to the mm-hmm. folks who uh made it a point to look at that and i i will say as we go through the plugging here um we would really really appreciate it where we are for whatever reason the algorithm hates us and and uh or or our our hardcore uh, views of things as it were, because if I use these words hardcore and they're against us, um, hopefully we'll get a few more uh, <laughs> subscribers back. Um, or, or if you're new here uh, and you like what you see, we would def- we would uh, love you for all time. If you decided to subscribe, please do. Um, it helps mm-hmm. helps let us know. Uh, we're not probably ever gonna ask you for money um, because we're not that channel yet. Um, and we probably never will be, and that's fine. That's not why we do this. We just like to, we want to build a community around this stuff more than anything. And we need people. We need people like you who watch this. Uh, so we thank you so much uh, for doing that. But if you could please 
Um, comment, like, subscribe. Uh, above all, subscribe to our YouTube channel here on YouTube, The First, The Last, The Nerdum. Uh, we might be going through uh, a newer thing there uh, in the new year. We'll see. But uh, anyway, I'll hand it off to you to do our bona fides for uh, the mm -hmm. social medias. Yeah, I was going to say, um, check out in the future our collab with uh, The Rizzler. Um, you definitely check out. <laughs> no, 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 that's not, not, not happening. <laughs> but uh, but <laughs> right uh, Rizzler's, uh, Rizzler's too big for us. But uh, okay, so yeah, we have uh, <laughs> the Reddit, uh, right. which uh, shame on me. I was kind of late late getting our, uh, our uh, stuff that's out okay. there, but um, the, the video did quite well, even without me. But, uh, but yeah, I do a little uh, promotion on uh the uh the reddit um so check us out there uh also i'm on um x or twitter uh promoting our stuff and then i think you have some bona fides as well yeah i do yeah uh, also i am on twitter so if you want to uh, have a good conversation with tom uh or ml me uh i would uh, i very much encourage it um i'm out uh, out there uh, ape it underscore inc um, also, uh, my be advised, my, uh, my that's a little bit more harder, uh, heavier opinion focused uh, side. Um, also, my publication of record where I do, I pull things silly, fun, entertainment, heavy, current events, whatever, and give an opinion. Um, and I write there pretty, uh, a couple of times a month or so, like whatever it strikes, um, sometimes more, um, 8 .inc. Um But anyway, really appreciate if you give us a uh, Go watch our last one, which is Civil War, as we mentioned before, or Trick or Treat, or one of the other 200 plus videos that we have in our back catalog. We would love you all the more yeah. for it. But this week, yeah, this I think, week, um, yeah, well, just one thing about Trick or Treat. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of uh, other um, commentators actually uh, talking about this movie, so I, I think it's gotten gotten into the uh, uh, people's sphere. sphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, but yeah, which uh, which it deserves. I mean, it's a fun little horror uh, anthology. Absolutely. And even if you don't, yeah, and I don't, and if you don't even like horror anthologies, you might like this because it kind of in, interweaves all the story to tell like a satisfying overall story as well. But yeah, let's uh, let's get into the V. <laughs> yeah. So this film, V for Vendetta, uh, came out um, in the early '00s. Uh, a very very well loved film. Already has a cult classic. Um, I had not seen this for a while, and I'm glad you suggested it, but I'll give the uh, rundown here for the audience um, just to kind of mm -hmm. set the table here. Um, we're going to be going into a, a 2005 uh, a James McTeague-directed uh, movie uh, based on a graphic novel, like we mentioned before, about uh, by Alan Moore uh, and David Lloyd. Mm -hmm. uh, boiled down, the graphic novel is a little bit more gritty. Um, it, it's got a great punchiness to it, and it's all its own. So whether you're coming in from there or you're coming into the movie, you have to understand the, the, the movie is going to be a little bit more shorter and a little bit more polished. Um, so one of the things that I just wanted to kind of kick right off the, off the thing, obviously this is a movie about revolution um, and, and the, the central conflict in the graphic novel is a little bit more wider than that. It's more about uh, anarchism and fascism uh, and it's a little bit more sprawling, whereas the movie is a little bit tighter uh, and to me, the film tones, it kind of tones a little bit of that down and it kind of frames the conflict as a little bit more simpler between liberty and authoritarianism. Um, and and uh, anyway, I was going to kind of set that out because there's a million ways that you can slice and dice that. Um, but that, those are just kind of a couple that I pulled out that I wanted to kind of cover um, or talk about yeah. or, or kind of hand it off to you and say what you were setting the table for that. Um, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, you know, obviously, it's good to be back uh, talking about a comic book related kind of uh, thing because uh, we're, uh, we're we all love the comic books here. But, uh, but yeah, it's yeah. one of those um, beloved uh, comic books. Um, and actually, um, the Wachowskis, they uh, they actually adapted V for Vendetta before even before they worked on. Uh, and did the matrix um that that's been kind of around for a while and uh they said that the first iteration of the script for v for vendetta was uh pretty pretty much faithful to the uh comic book and then um you know but it, over the years it kind of developed more towards where it is today and um james mcatig uh, he's actually um with their assistant director for the matrix and uh, after they finished the Matrix, um, they gave <laughs> James said he, they kind of gave him his uh, birthday present by or Christmas present by saying, "Hey, um, 
hey, we got this script here. We'd like you to direct it. And then uh, we uh, we do the script for V for Vendetta. And he goes, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it's based off of Alan Moore and David Lloyd. And if you watch the, uh, watch the movie V for Vendetta, um, you'll know uh, that uh, – Suspiciously, Alan Moore's name's nowhere on it. Uh, when the credit rolls, it's based off a graphic novel by uh, illustrated by David Lloyd, <laughs> which uh, Alan Moore's uh, a bit of a, a hippie curmudgeon. Um, he <laughs> and uh, he's uh, decided that he doesn't like um, Hollywood adaptions of his works, and that he's going to disown all of them. Uh, he was one of the first creators that. Um, I, I that I loved that I, I kind of had to separate him from the, the work mm-hmm. uh, because he he says all these crazy things and um, a lot of things I don't agree with and um, but I, I really love and appreciate his most of his um, you know artistic work so you kind of have to um, <laughs> he was again the first guy that I was like okay yeah I love your work but yeah you're you're a little you're a little sussy so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there he's always been, you know, and and God bless him for it, you know, whether you like him yeah. or not, whatever. That that it takes a collective you appreciate him for having, yeah. You, it takes a collective, <laughs> to be an artist, yeah. yeah, creative personalities to make things that push the boundaries, and you know, um, and that's the beautiful thing when you make something like a graphic novel, whatever it is, um, then it becomes its own thing, right? It has its own life, mm-hmm. uh, as as we see here. This movie can't. I, I, yeah, my history with this movie and background is uh, I probably saw it. Uh, I didn't see it in the theater. Um, not too far after it, though. And then it obviously became kind of like this thing that was a nerd. Um, got And I, I did not go back around because uh, I was not into as deep as I was into some things. Um, and like kind of go back and like read the graphic novel. I, um, I've read a little bit of it, uh-huh. um, but I haven't, you know, not, su- not su- anything substantial to draw conclusions or aside from, you know, uh-huh talking about it for this for this movie um but it yeah, the, I, I think it, it, it's 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 a very great great starter right it, it's a starting uh-huh. point for this and then we get the movie and the movie had quality throughout the throughout the production of it uh the actors actresses so they didn't really corrupt it or you know do something that you know Hollywood is is usually guilty of that Alan Moore would absolutely be correct on, you know, calling out <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But uh, that's kind of the thing. You know, I'm glad that he's out, uh, outspoken. Um, I would not. He wouldn't be Alan Moore. <laughs> so, uh, so. Kind of like exactly. Roger Waters, you know, you you, you mm-hmm. take the good and the bad. You know, it is what it is, whatever that means to you. So. <laughs> yeah. And this is um, just a little back uh, story on the graphic novel. Um, you yeah, know, it's obviously started off as a comic book. And uh, I think it was published originally by Warriors, and the only half of it got published because uh, they went out of business. Um, so it was kind of left hanging, and um, Alan Moore went on to uh, work with DC and uh, was doing The Watchmen. And um, Karen Berger, who's a wonderful woman that was – you know, if you, if you if you if you're under the impression that there was no women in comics right. until recently, you're you're dead wrong. Karen Berger is like a major force in comics. And she movies, brought yeah. DC. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She brought uh, Vertigo uh, to prominence in DC, which is a huge, mm. big comic book thing um, that that brought a lot of a lot of talent, like Neil G- uh, Gaiman and. Um, uh, Alan Moore, but uh, but yeah, she brought Alan Moore to uh, DC, and he started doing uh, Watchmen, and um, you know she brought to uh, the the DC higher up said, hey, let's let's uh, also bring over uh, V from Vendetta. So while uh, he was working towards the end of Watchmen, they were him and David Lloyd were working on finishing up uh, V from Vendetta. So uh, uh, kudos to DC for resurrecting um, the story that may have uh, <laughs> went nowhere. And, um, uh, you know, it was a claim thing that only got halfway finished. Um, but yeah, um, I, I have read it and uh, yeah, I was, I was primed for this movie uh, because I, you know, like a lot of people were, were kind of, Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, um, right. <laughs> when uh, the the sequels to Matrix came out, uh, yeah, a lot of people were kind of put off by them, but I loved them. They they heightened my uh, feelings for the Matrix. So when uh, this movie came out, um, you know, it was it was uh, you know 
V for Vendetta, which I loved, and the Wachowski brothers doing this is like okay, it's a, it's a no brainer. So yeah, I, I definitely went to the theaters to uh, to see it, and uh, been a fan of it um, ever since. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. I have I also have a soft spot in the heart for the for the brothers. Um, they um, like a, a lot of I thought Matrix Two was really like, I had I think it had the best overall chase scene. Um, like uh, that I've ever seen, in my opinion, that's one of the top top mm -hmm. top twenty five for sure. You know, car chase scenes kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think the third one kind of landed how it did, but I wasn't unhappy. I mean, it was a conclusion. Uh, and what do you expect? Mm -hmm. uh, the the, it, the first <laughs> the first movie they made was could have been single period. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. they it is what it is, but it became it became a beautiful thing, just like this movie has um, has become. And, and whether it's just a cultural impact to kind of slide into that um, for that um, it, it, the mask that you see the Guy Fox mask has become mm -hmm. a symbol of resistance and protest um, if you're old if you're old like me and Tom you remember the, the mm -hmm. Occupy Wall Street days and the coverage of that mm -hmm. um, a little bit more recently the Hong Kong protest like from from uh, four or five years back <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and yeah. Generally associated with re rebellion, activists, and hackers, also too. Like for a good chunk of uh, uh -huh. last decade, you saw this mask. It was um, the famous hacking group Anonymous, I think. But anyway, um, the yeah, film Anonymous, yeah, they yeah. kind of adopted the the mask. And I will also point out um, another show that I absolutely love that kind of did their own kind of take on the Guy Fox mask, um, which is obviously kind of influenced by this movie, uh, Mr. Robot. Um, mm -hmm. If you have never seen that show, definitely check it out. It's a uh, sort of a hacker, hacker's delight <laughs> kind of movie or show um, that's highly influenced by Fight Club and V for Vendetta and a lot of other good stuff awesome. um, that just kind of amplifies that. But yeah, just my... Well, yeah, no, absolutely. My, uh, yeah, it, no, no, I, I love it, and I, um, you have talked ad, ad, admiringly about that uh, that show. So, and that's one that I, I need to get caught up with. But, um, but mm -hmm. he, he, all these things kind of the film uh, all trace back to this film, and you see uh, a one to one example of the themes of oppression and freedom and rebellion, and they resonate with modern um, in, in just about any political climate that you want to do it, whatever language it is, you know, as long as you can understand what's going on. Um, but it, it makes it evergreen over time. Um, mm -hmm. right. So we're kind of setting the table. Okay. What, what is this film? It's about revolution. Da, da, da. So what does that mean? It means that, um, to get the, the political context Britain, it's Britain and Britain is under this fascist Norse fire regime, uh, that is totalitarian and controls the population through fear and, uh, and uncertainty and doubt and surveillance and propaganda, hunt, like all the time, right? And it, it, they're, it, they're, no, they're kind of like little drops of, they're modeled after different regimes in history that are fascist. Um, like, so, and they kind of show a little bit of elements of, they do, a, they don't tell the audience, which is another thing that films used to do. Um, they kind of show you and then you like, oh God, that's a concentration camp or, the media is manipulating mm -hmm. or there is suppression of individual thought of dissent, you know? Um, and, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of like the high, high thing. And we'll kind of dive into more of the, the details of that. Um, any, yeah. any, any commentary on that one? Yeah. The, um, uh, going back to the comic book, Alan Moore obviously wrote this, uh, during the late seventies or in the uh, early eighties. Right. Um, and he is obviously the thing that, you know, he's British. So he, and then, you know, set in Britain, um, obviously what he had on his mind was, uh, the, the Margaret Thatcher era mm -hmm. of, uh, government. Um, so it was his kind of his reaction to that. And this is sort of, uh, written in the eighties, uh, but it's kind of projected into a kind of a futuristic right. world of the nineties. And whereas this was, um, yeah, you know, uh, put out in the 2000s, and um, so um, you know, sort of, um, you know, kind of projected to the is sort of set into the 2000s as well, uh, but it's mainly written in the 90s and sort of looking towards the the future of the 2000s. Uh, but yeah, so it's a sort of an alternate uh, alternate world um, kind of sci-fi sort of a take on things. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's not um, 
one of the things you kind of have to uh, keep in mind that it's sort of a alternate reality. So it, it kind of plays fast and loose with uh, ideas of uh, you know, what the future would be. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And actually, this is, uh, I forgot to mention this. I'm glad you said something. Um, this is our second in our mini series of alternative kind of reality type things. We're going to do it again mm -hmm. um, with a little bit more uh, ribbon and, 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 and bunting around it. Uh, but this is our second uh, in our mini series of that. And the first one, which we covered at the top of the show, was A24 and Civil War. This is more mm -hmm. of a kind of skating through a, a little bit different timeline with, with Britain. Um, but all the things are there. Mm -hmm. um, you have the, the, the explores the tension um, with the V plays as the, you know, the antihero, uh, I guess, um, mm -hmm. versus like kind of like this this idea that was also loosely modeled on the concept of like if you're familiar with british history uk history like there was the the this famous i won't go through it because i can't do justice to the facts but it happened a long long time ago and it was like an attempt to blow up parliament essentially is what it was um right it was basically right. the catholics it was a kind of a catholic right. uh uprising rebellion because they felt like they were being oppressed which they were right. <laughs> well, let's call, call a, a speed of speed but yeah real oppression right like Absolutely, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. There's like a little cool little documentary on uh, on the V for Bed 4K uh, that uh, kind of goes over the history of Guy Fox. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, uh, interesting, interesting story. Um, yeah, gun, anything gun, in, in yeah the gunpowder plot uh, of 1605. Sorry, uh -huh. I buried that in my notes, but go ahead, sir. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, no worries. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, they uh, they were going to blow up parliament while everybody was there, including the uh, king at the time. So, um, yeah, they, they, uh, were going to, uh, set it off, but there was some, uh, yeah, some, some loose lips there and, uh, they got, got out and, uh, Guy Fox got captured and, uh, yeah. became the, um, the, the face of the, of the rebellion. And, uh, from this day on, they, uh, do their little, um, celebration <laughs> of, uh, of, um, the, what the kids would do would make up the little, their little guy fox out of straw and whatnot, and then um, they had to go around um, collecting money so that they could buy fireworks and um, different things to uh, set him afire at the end of the night. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. The, and obviously, you know, uh, we are in 2024, and there, th this movie, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, and we've kind of talked about uh, as we're kind of creeping up the vine here uh, with it is the fact that like th this movie is really good in just about any, it, it's very evergreen, right? So we had COVID, right? You know, you had or the Rona, <laughs> you know, you, you have mm -hmm. uh, themes of government overreach, of censorship, of civil liberties, you know, th these things, these fit very well, uh, you know, like mass surveillance mm -hmm. and these authoritarian, very scary things, you know, that make for a very harrowing movie. Um, it moves mm -hmm. them, it moves them in yeah. place and, and puts them it sets it up very well which which I, I suppose yeah. leads us to who who is this V who is V it, um, you know it's you know th this you know are they trying to do personal revenge are they trying to be something more you know what what is mm -hmm. that I don't know what do you think like I I definitely caught a Batman like vibe. <laughs> <laughs> from mm -hmm. uh, from it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I know one of my notes where it was that um this is sort of uh we're, we'll we'll never get a wachowski or, or, or uh, uh mcteague's uh batman but yeah. uh this yeah. sort of kind of like an insight onto what maybe uh, a batman movie would would look like or, or feel like uh and uh so yeah we're on kind of the same wavelength there and then um also uh noticed in your notes that um you kind of mentioned the um uh, Phantom of the Opera, and that's uh, obviously what I got vibes of as yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, one one last thing on the uh, just to double back on the sure. Guy Fox mask, um, I watched an interview with uh, David Lloyd, who's the illustrator of the comic book, and he pointed out that um, yeah, you know, they decided on the Guy Fox mask. And um, he was the guy that actually came up with the story behind V for Vendetta and was actually going to write it as well. But Alan Moore was brought in or he brought him in to uh, flesh it out and, uh, and really kind of nail it down. So, But <laughs> he, he, you got to remember, this was the 80s and he was writing it um, in this or drawing it in the summer and he had no references to a Guy Fox mask. 
um, you know, you, it was the 80s, so you couldn't just get on the internet and uh, pull up a, various images of the mask, and there was no stores selling the mask, and he didn't have any handy, so he kind of did it from memory. So um, if it kind of looks kind of um, kind of not quite like those masks, that's that's the reason why, and I think that's probably to its benefit that you got this, uh, you know, kind of a ephemeral kind of version of of this mask that kind of changes, you know. Um, the, the cool thing about comic books is you could change the look of the mask as you draw it <laughs> you know, for whatever mood you have for that current scene, uh, whereas obviously can't do that in a, a movie. But I think they did a wonderful job. One of the things I noticed about the movie uh, visually was that that mask looks really good. <laughs> you, know, you see all these knockoff masks um, in um uh, on various, you know, anonymous people or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of those cheap masks, but that that looks, yeah, the, the nice solid mask on there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it also reminds me, you mentioned Phantom of the Opera, like one of my favorite stories uh, in classic books of all time, uh, in, in film and in, in, in its original book, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo um, and, and his quest for mm -hmm. vengeance. I love that. That That is, mm -hmm. a, that is just, that is a, it's just one of my favorite movies and i certainly have my favorite versions therein but um this mm -hmm. this is a callback to that for me for sure um kind of a like a mm -hmm. quick shortcut just like the phantom of the opera is also um mm -hmm. but v uses a terror and violence you know because obviously the, the the famous historic thing is uh one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist or the opposite whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, right exactly <laughs> right but he does uh, but his methods are, are are they're not wanton violence for violence sake but to for effect uh to, to inspire mm -hmm. mass action you know mass revolt mm -hmm. rebellion yeah because if you notice yeah if you noticed in the very um opening scene where he um saves ev from the uh the, the, the fascist police uh he, he doesn't kill him uh he could very much could have killed him uh, but uh it, the situation didn't call for him to kill them uh, and he didn't have any uh, <laughs> need to. And, and later, when his life's threatened, that's the only time he actually does uh, kill people. Right. Or if he's <laughs> looking at the, they're the targets of his revenge, and then yeah, <laughs> game over. But uh, but yeah, uh, very very interesting. He's sort of a um, enigmatic character. Uh, again, you, like you said, they don't tell you how to feel or think about right. the different things. Um, they show you. They they show they show, uh, and so that's 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 kind of a wonderful thing. Um, there's they do kind of punch home uh, certain things, uh, which you know it's a comic book movie at heart. So and it it, it does wear that on its sleeve. So uh, if maybe they kind of drill certain points home, um, they they're kind of forgiven for that. Yeah, um, there's that. Um, they do watch the Monte, Monte uh, Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, at one point in the uh, yeah, sure. thing, and Evie points out uh, one of the big themes of the movie where she said, you know, she kind of wishes that he had uh, chose um, the girl over revenge. <laughs> and uh, that's that sort of um, kind of plays, plays um, again towards the end of the movie. It, it kind of has echoes, um, and uh, there's like a... A scene where uh, V uh, has his rebirth moment, and then um, Evie has her rebirth moment, and they kind of <laughs> they kind of cut back to his rebirth as she's doing her rebirth. It's like, ah, he probably didn't have to do that. I mean, that was kind of a given, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, there there were some sloppy cuts or whatever or whatever, and not, <laughs> not as tight as they could be. Um, and they, but they they didn't take away from the the thing at all because no, th th no, there no. Are, are are third rails this movie touches on and 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 blends them in very well for you to kind of stay tuned to Evie Hammond. Um, I'm glad you mentioned her. She's just supposed mm -hmm. to be now in the graphic novel. She had a profession, um, but again, this movie is a little bit softer brush in of that. So she just represents every person, you know, every woman kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, like how quick, basically, how quickly you can go from everyday Monday through Friday to all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, by the way, uh, you've been you're in processing, and I have that up on the screen. And it's so funny how life imitates art. 
and art imitates life in this dance that never goes on. I, I, I was <laughs> going to mention it before, but uh, um, we didn't get to it, but it was just fine. But um, the reaction to in the U.S. to this is to co-op some of the other movements that are out there in the world that have been out there. For, mm -hmm. There's this one called 4B. I won't get into it because it's not really germane to what we do, but basically one of the things that happens is that you shave your head as a, as a female and that is like you're signaling to the world that you're anyway very ironic that this movie just kind of we just naturally land in and the character famously natalie portman who plays um uh, evie is you know this isn't the processing thing but there are very iconic shots of her like when she is essentially being stripped of your of her humanity and her individuality to become this uh -huh. um thing of the state basically the state is saying we control you um and anything related to your individuality especially for a woman to have her hair cut off is something is something extra shameful you know it, it it just adds to the gravity of the scene again they're not telling you what to think they're just kind of showing you the story and as it happens uh -huh. you can't help but be drawn into this so i just i kind of wanted to mention that as like a kind of like a surreal <laughs> like uh -huh. thing that that people do and you know people take people take things how they how they do but it, i just thought it was very iconic um I yeah and it's that. i think that's the one of the joys and benefits of a sci-fi um story uh is that um you don't have to label things on this um you know it's not it's not not political party a it's not political party b it's it's um you know this made up thing so you can read you know, um you don't have to immediately decide oh what what side am i on on this you could just enjoy it as a movie and both any any party can kind of watch it and draw their own conclusions from it and then enjoy it and i think um i think if it came out today um i think everybody would be looking and deciding what political angle this mm -hmm. was. Yeah. I, I just yeah. love that it was at a time, it came out at a time where people could just appreciate it's it for what it was. Right. Right. Uh, it's, it's just a movie right. with, with interesting ideas. You could agree with them or not. not. You could debate them. Uh, you could have fun with them. Um, again, this was, um, you know, when I was watching interviews at the time, they were calling it an action thriller or, uh, you know, a political thriller, uh, you know, an action movie. Uh, it really uh, kind of is a mix of, of all of those things. It's definitely an action movie. Uh, but if you're just wanting pure action, you're not going to get it. You're going to get some ideas as well uh, to kind of chew over. Um, and the, it's kind of an intricate story. One of the things that uh, I might be jumping around your outline, but... Um, no, that's fine. One of the things, one of the things I, I liked about this movie is the the technology and the the lack thereof. Right. And Wasn't even uh, I like how, <laughs> yeah, um, I it was very clear that uh, the only people that had uh, computers and cell phones were the police, um, mm. the totalitarian state. Um, everybody else was sort of like living in the eighties or nineties with just the TV. Um, they, they wanted, the, um, you know, that's to the benefit of the totalitarian state is that, you know, you only have one voice, which is their voice <laughs> that controls everything. And, um, I'm sure, you know, whatever <laughs> leanings or, or, or things you have in your head, uh, today, um, that kind of, um, it's kind of a, a current thought of, uh, you know, how much media has an influence on you and the fact that um they the very fact that you're thinking about the fact that media has an influence on you right. uh is is very uh cognizant of, of people today and this um right. and back then it was just kind of an idea right uh, kind of like oh wow you know it, this, this is kind of crazy this is crazy part. crazy th 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 talk yeah. um whereas now it's something that's very tangible that you could uh, touch and see well, and and feel today you, well you <laughs> have you literally have real world examples and this was true back in, in mm -hmm. 2005 2006 as it is today in different ways obviously but you you have th this, right um this this concept of of you know the media is supposed to have a natural push pull, right? Because there's supposed to be a subset of people of the people, right? And then you have this push pull with government, mm -hmm. and then, but, but when you don't have that, 
and it is the government, uh-huh. it is the media, and it does push this thing out. And and if you are not toting the party line, you don't have a you will not have a seat at the table, and you will be forgotten about. Essentially, mm-hmm. actually, this kind of reminds me of um, uh, in in North Korea, which is probably the closest real world thing that we'll get to. You know this. Uh, that is out there, which mm-hmm. is in order to even have internet access in North Korea, you have to have a a, a letter, a personal letter from dear leader. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and even then you have a very restricted. So you go on a watch list, which is essentially what is in this movie without exception. But um, I just thought mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. It, it It showed as this movie laid things out, they didn't tell you what to think or, or whatever you were drawn in. You were drawn into the brutality of, of this process of this poor woman who just got whatever for no good reason, you know, that they didn't need a reason, uh-huh. you know, and, and then gets swept up in this whole thing. It's a little bit more connected than that, but I don't uh-huh. want to give everything away, but um, <laughs> to kind of go in, into this, like Natalie Portman plays her character very well. Um, so does everybody really? Uh, I didn't find yeah. anybody lacking at, at all. Yeah. Kind of... Hugo, Hugo Weaving, even though he wears the mask and he's very much a presence, Absolutely. and uh, I was very much impressed by him. He's in, <laughs> I think he's on in everything I love, like uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, Matrix. Oh, yeah. I mean, this guy's like, <laughs> he is. like a he's perfect. Yeah, he's 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 a, a powerhouse. Um, and then yeah, Natalie Portman's. Is great like she always is, and then um, I will point out, yeah, Rupert Graves is great um, as the uh, uh, the <laughs> detective that. Uh, right. No, uh, I guess he's um, that was the one of the uh, detectives. The other guy that uh, the main guy, I forget his name, um, but also uh, Stephen Fry. He has a small role in this movie uh, as the um, the gay. Um, uh, TV show host um, that's kind of has to hide that that he is gay. Stephen Fry, wonderful actor. Uh, he's also a writer as well. Uh, St- Stephen Ray is uh, also the guy that I was thinking of. But yeah, Stephen Fry, he's uh, he's awesome. He's uh, he narrates a lot of things. Like he's the uh, voice in um, that little big planet. <laughs> he's the British guy oh, okay. voice in that. But uh, but yeah, he's he's all over the place. He has. Uh, he's written some wonderful uh, British shows, uh, and um, he's he's also a, a novelist himself. Uh, I've read a few of his novels. Great humorist. Uh, he's um, in the movie he, again. He plays sort of the uh, the host of this uh, comedy show um, that's um, kind of goes off the rails. But he's sort of like um, in this. He's sort of like the modern day uh, Oscar Wilde uh, kind of character in this movie, and. Um, that uh, Natalie Portman uh, character <laughs> gets to meet, uh, but yeah, and, and it's Stephen Stephen Ray is uh, the guy that I was thinking as far as uh, uh, the detective that's kind of investigating this this case that maybe is going a little too far in certain things. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna bring up that detective also re- kind of reminded me of John Goodman when we covered uh, Captive State a little bit. Um, oh probably, yeah, probably uh-huh. a little bit more lower quality than what you would get with. Uh-huh. Uh, probably a notch or two down below as far as quality goes, but it's still a good story. And I, and, and I, mm-hmm. I forced you to watch this one. So, um, but John good, he, 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 he <laughs> has his, but anyway, it, it's in praise of him being a good actor. Anyway, uh, uh, he does a very good job of yeah. that. It, again, draws you in and humanizes these, these characters for the story and this plot and, and really pulls you in. Um, he does a very, you're right. I, I agree a hundred percent. I think that's, most of the characters that I, that the there, I'm so glad you brought those guys in because I didn't have them in my notes as well. I kind of oh, yeah, no, there's they, just uh, so much to cover for this, so like it's kind of hard to land yeah. <laughs> a, a land a needle in. Um, but we're about yeah. If you're okay. yeah, if you're very interested, uh, just one more plug for Stephen uh, Fry. Um, yeah, yeah, if you're really into like um, kind of interesting kind of uh, British humor, uh. He, Track down some of his novels. They're they're um, they're very humorous, but um, have a very human heart to them as well. And uh, he's a gay man, so it's kind of a a lot of the stories is uh, sort of coming of age uh, in that perspective. That's awesome. um, there's there's one about a, a you know a, about a, a guy in the growing up in the a boy school. Uh, you know, it is 
again, he's he's a really good writer. So yeah, check check him out uh, if you want to want to read something kind of uh, with a humorous slant, but uh, but uh, maybe a little bit different, uh, kind of out of your wheelhouse of of reading. But yeah, very good stuff. Um, also. I would also like to, in in conjunction with this, um, there's a big um, a gay and lesbian kind of angle to this movie, mm-hmm. uh, LGBT. Uh, in that's that's not um, out of left field. Obviously, one of the uh, Wachowski brothers at that time was transitioning, and there is some kind of allegorical elements of that with this movie. Um, obviously it doesn't beat you over the head. I think Lena was, um, transitioning at that time. Her other brother transitioned a little mm-hmm. later. Uh, but, um, but you can see that in the character of V, uh, he, his, his body has not, it has kind of changed, um, in the movie and he's not completely comfortable with who he is at that point. You know, um, there's, there's kind of a struggle with him. Obviously he's wearing a mask to kind of hide, who he is, or, or actually he, kind of hiding who he is, but he becomes the mask, and that becomes who he is. He he's, he I chose that mask of, of of who he wants to be, and he becomes that at the end. Um, so it's sort of a you could kind of see it as sort of an allegorical to um, you know a, a a person transitioning into who right. they they feel they truly are. Um, so that's but it's it's kind of done in a way that obviously doesn't hit you over the head, uh, and you can see the message or you don't. <laughs> obviously, uh, something that you do see quite a bit is the oppression of uh, uh, gay individuals in this movie because obviously the um, totalitarian government that's depicted here, uh, that's something they want to stamp out it's and um, they arbitrarily just don't like and want to eradicate. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Yeah, and there's um, a scene uh, towards the towards the end where uh, Evie uh, is imprisoned, and she finds a kind of a diary written on toilet paper of this um, uh, woman that's a lesbian that gets captured and ultimately dies in the prison, and she's there reading the her story. <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, and I think that this is sort of like a, a testament of the times. Um, one of the the only thing that um, the director said that the studio asked him to remove was that the, that scene. Um, they they were uncomfortable with the lesbian story that was told during the movie, yeah. which um, is interesting because if flip it to today, if the movie was made today, they would want you or force you <laughs> to have that scene in the movie. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's it's well, kind of interesting that. It. In, in a way mm-hmm. that would be over the top, and you know, it, it would probably be the opposite, <laughs> the opposite of this. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah. So so yeah. At the time uh, when it came out, the, the whole thing with um, it is kind of crazy to think that people were kind of hesitant to have uh, a gay story right. in in a movie at that time, a big blockbuster movie. There were it's okay for like a, a little indie movie, but a big blockbuster movie, you can't have that in the. In this, so so it's one of the the first movies that probably had a uh, a big kind of a lesbian story that was center focus. That um, sure. I, I don't remember at the time it being any any controversy over no. it. Um, no. Well, and <clears throat> and that kind of goes back to what you were saying before. Like, whereas this movie is timeless because it's evergreen, you can kind of fit it in mm-hmm. any generic kind of rebellion or resistance scenario, whatever that looks like. Um, that's what I also love about uh, what I loved about A24 and why I loved Civil War so much because it was not a film. If you try to graft on today and what's going on today, whether that today is, is 2022 or 2020, you know, 32, whatever, whatever the hell it is, it's not going to work so well because it doesn't quite work like that. Um, but that's what art, good art is. It, it can slip in and, uh-huh. in and you can find it in places where you would normally never see it. Um, and, and that mm-hmm. is something that goes in to, um, you know, gay and lesbian. It, the whole point is, is that the government wants control. It's about control, which kind of brings mm-hmm. back to the fascism uh, angle of like, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to be an individual person. You're allowed to be only in the mm-hmm. product of what the state tells you that you can or can't do, which, um, you know, is doped in this for freedom and fear all the, like every scene of this movie. 
Um, then there's tension too, and they use it very well. Um, but that's not surprising with with the, the with the um, the writing that we're getting and where it was based off of and, and who executed the uh, the uh, mm-hmm. you know the, the, the storyline and the production too. Yep, and the yeah the <laughs> V's sort of lair. He has all these band uh, paintings and and uh, books and art. And <laughs> one of the things I saw was uh, one of the interviews uh, that they did at the time of Natalie Portman saying, "Yeah, I was in this uh, room with all these band books." And she goes, um, "I guess they had to fill it in with all these books." But she goes, "I, I saw like the um, uh, autobiography of Ginger Spice," and she goes, "I don't know if." <laughs> That really would have been a focus to to band, but I guess wow. they had to find a book, bunch of books to, <laughs> right. to put in there. Well, it, 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 it kind of. But goes... if you look real close, you might find a Ginger Spice well, uh, autobio. <laughs> well, that is funny you said it too, because the, the power of ideas and the whole point that V is is that ideas are bulletproof, right? That the, the mm-hmm. individual people that talk about those ideas may perish, but the ideas live mm-hmm. on, right? And. And not only mm-hmm. ideas, but natural states of people. Like, if you are you are lesbian, if you are gay, if you are straight, if you are whatever you are, you know, mm-hmm. the state can't have that unless it is something that is in their best interest. And like the um, mm-hmm. the CCP is famous for, uh, it was a lot more open and and whatnot, and it kind of got become became more restricted. Basically, the it's very arbitrary, and it's like. You can do this until you can't because it affects the you know uh, undermines mm-hmm. power and authority and and these these kind of things that um you know the forever the nanny state <laughs> you know that that uh, <laughs> people kind of joke about but is definitely something that has been creeping up since this movie came on the scene till now it is kind of you know it does give a little bit of a shiver when you start to think about it for a little bit but um yeah it's it's kind of surprising that this movie hasn't been really been talked about and More. brought back up into the consciousness because yeah, yeah like you said uh, i really forgot about the whole um me too uh the the whole whole thing with the uh <laughs> epidemic in this movie uh it really should have been like a, a talk of the town whenever um you know uh covid came on the scene but yeah it's it's, it's um very like you said, prescient kind of kind of movie that that's kind of like evergreen, and that's the best best of uh, sci-fi and fantasy. Um, they, there's the ones that that bring back and, and explore the ideas and feel as fresh as today, um, because it's beyond whatever's happening at the time. It's dealing with ideas and and really rich ideas that you could really kind of dig into and explore in, in new and interesting ways um, as it reflects of uh, what your reality is of the day. But yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a, definitely a movie. Um, now, now <laughs> to be honest, um, as I was watching it, I did, um, I kept thinking of the logistics of what V was doing and sure. how he could do the things he did. And, you know, I think under, under a microscope, you might, <laughs> things start to crack. Right. Um, so it's, it's not a perfect movie, obviously, but, uh, but for what it is and for what it tries to achieve, uh, it does achieve quite a bit. And um, the, the, we won't get into spoilers, but it ends of a very uh, epic um, epic, epic, and uh, emotional, uh, with a, a very emotional speech from Evie uh, that really resonates um, every time you watch it. <laughs> yep, I agree, hundred um, percent. Yeah, well, that kind of just goes to all the other things that make this movie what it is. Um, we kind of talked, talked, we talked a lot about the the bigger, wider themes, which you cannot watch this movie and not get into. Of course, it's going to be amazingly mm-hmm. different between two two different people, but. Um, the mm-hmm. again, this is the kind of movie that really I love, where you where there's the color and the light and the darkness, um, the visual styles and the cinematography are good. Um, they really they are their own character to kind of show you, you know, when liberation is on the screen and when you know kind of dark oppressive you know other other things are going on, um, and it, and it also kind of plays through that also with the the soundtrack. Also, uh, pretty good. Um, I would say it's like yeah. fantastically good, like I normally like because I go pretty nuts on ones, but it, it, it holds up very well. Um, and it definitely mm-hmm. triggers uh, and, and plays with the emotions 100%. Not, 
not just in what you were talking about, but in also in other getting up to that point. Um, yeah. Also, kind of, kind of, <laughs> yeah. punches a hole in 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 how, um, you know, how this regime, you know, like when you get down to the technical nerd things of it, it it it, it really sticks to the themes very well. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So there's a little bit of space yeah. between the, uh, the how they get there, but again, you you go along with the ride because you're compelled with the emotion. Um, that you see there, and I, I agree. I, I think that's. I'm surprised that this is not talked about more, <laughs> considering the era. Of course, now uh, I'm right. sure it will be, um, because we're kicking off another cultural event in, in the United States um, that could be taken one way. You're either A or you're B. We're not saying this side or that <laughs> side. We're just saying either you're A, Team A, or Team B. And if you're not on the team that wins, then you're gonna, you know, you get, you get. You know, the, the, these themes that are, well, are are forever generational, right? Like a rebellion, <laughs> resisting, yeah. da, 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 whatever. Um, <laughs> you like get that, the stick. <laughs> right, yeah, you get the stick <laughs> and, you know, be worried, da, 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 whatever. But, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I think we're kind of coming up on the caboose a little bit, but um, I agree with you. And, um, yeah, uh, just to, um, uh, well, the reason why I, I uh, kind of brought this to uh, to the table sure. is because um, I was looking for um, stuff on uh, on Amazon, as you do, because you can't look at physical media at the local store anymore, uh, or at least not a very big selection. And I noticed that um, that yeah, that the uh, the 4K was available. You know, I, I was I'm always looking to upgrade cheaply uh, stuff. So yeah, I, I picked up the uh, the 4K of of it uh, along with the uh, lost boys um i got those back in the back then and we did the uh, lost boys a few months back yeah. um and then um mike you wisely said let's save this for november remember remember the uh fifth of no november yep. so, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah so i was like yeah yeah definitely um the 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 four case um Pretty bare bones. You do get a uh, a newer interview between uh, Leah Wachat Wachowski and John Matik, uh, along with a lot of the older um, stuff on there. Like I said, it's got a got a cool little interview with a, a bunch of, uh, including Karen Berger, mm -hmm. um, kind of a fifteen minute um, little documentary on the comic book, which you're highlighting there. And it also has, oddly enough. If you're in the mood for um, Natalie Portman to rap, uh, there is the SNL short that she did Same. back in the 2000s uh, with uh, Adam Sandberg, mm -hmm. where uh, she kind of curses up the storm. Yeah. Uh, if you're around back then, Classic. you know exactly what we're yeah. talking about. You're 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 stopping our video to go to um, <laughs> the uh, the clip on YouTube of her rapping. Um, Badass, but yeah, <laughs> funny too, hilarious, hilarious, yeah, multi talented. Yeah, not really out there. Yeah. yeah, there's not a movie that she makes that I don't like, um, because she's precious mm -hmm. and, and a, a national treasure. God bless her. But yeah, so go check it out. The, the, this will be in the show notes too, also. Um, and I, I think we're kind of coming up. It's a great, it's a great price for this right now. I don't know if it's on bucks. sale because yeah. of yeah, twenty six bucks for a quality yeah. mask and a uh, graphic novel, and that's. That's a, it looks like um ceramic, sort of right? like the the yeah ceramic um nice nice quality if you scroll down they have the knockoffs um down there I think when I was looking at it maybe um maybe I lied but um uh, but yeah uh, maybe it was my suggestions other but books. Uh, <laughs> yeah it doesn't have the other Amazon yeah. uh here uh, here's other crap that you can buy <laughs> yeah, exactly but, well and that's fine because I don't I I cut Amazon off a long time ago but we cover that mm -hmm. if you are a faithful viewer you know that mm -hmm. but anyway um I was gonna go back to to, to the th anyway yeah I'll just go back to that uh, yeah I was gonna say um it remains relevant I'm so glad you mentioned it because I did re the remember because how do you not know if you're a history nerd. Um, and you and you have this this consequential election that everybody's making out to be the end the end of uh, the end of whatever you know whatever that is for you. Uh, remember, remember the fifth of November because it was you know the uh, the um, history history nerd there. But no, it was, it was very apropos, um, especially like the day out, you know like the <laughs> like the, uh, the thing. Um, and I think that's why I loved uh, Civil War so much too. But this feeds into that kind of that dystopian. Thriller yep, kind it's of very much angle, either, in the, uh, before but... or after or somewhere in between. Like these, uh, Red Dawn is a classic one that we will of it, and the remake. Although I don't know that we'll do the remake, but we might hit mm -hmm. uh, with some of these alternative kind of things. We do have 
some time and space that yep. we, we put on the calendar in 2025 um, to a little bit to kind of take our favorite versions of these things and, and, and really yeah. really talk about them. And I'm excited for that. Yep. But Yeah, and uh, to Alan Moore's chagrin, we may cover uh, Watchmen as well. <laughs> oh, one day we will. I, I, that's one of my yeah. most favorite uh, favorite mm-hmm. films, uh, but um, as we get there, uh, I was gonna say um, it did. This movie is a classic movie that that really left outside of the the four corners of, of the big screen um, and became mm-hmm. something very alive, um, something crucial, a, 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 cult- a cultural touchstone, which I have no doubt will will play into the future for sure. No matter whether it's um. Well, I don't know, whatever the whatever the latest thing to be to be uh, you know to whatever the latest uh, you know uh, wrong injustice in the world to be around uh, for but um, you know kind of all joking aside you know th- this plays the the film does a very good job of playing with the moral amb- ambiguity and, and weaving this in you know like it's just you know it, it kind of again it leaves you to the very end was this worth it is this you know do the ends justify the means do the, you know was this a true you know. <laughs> Um, it, but that's the whole point with these films is you're dropped into it and then you figure it out. Um, what, mm-hmm. But like you said, yeah, there are flaws. Um, but I, I think that there are more wins than losses. Um, and, and you're mm-hmm. in for a high quality uh, evening for entertainment should you choose to watch it. I don't, do you have any other yeah. final, final uh, thoughts? Or if we miss anything, please uh, feel free to wheel it back in. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no no um yeah i think uh, any adaption obviously it's a 10 issue comic book even though it's a comic book um it is uh, <laughs> a kind of a thick thick story to it so yeah to kind of you know rattle it down to uh just over two hours and i have to say that um uh, we always talk about the length of a movie i think it earns its uh, running time of two hours and 12 minutes um, we sh- we should probably have a segment at the end of all of our uh, movie things where we say, "Is the length of the movie justified?" Right. right, right. Yeah, <laughs> and, that comes uh, up. That's an old, old man shouting, kind of get off my lawn. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I think it was justified in this, and uh, in fact, they probably could have expanded it a little bit more. Uh, like I said, they kind of had to um, kind of narrow it down to that time frame, and um, you can kind of see some of the wear and tear to some of the logic of the movie. Right that they had to, because uh, they had to compress compress it so much. But uh, but yeah, I think they did a, a wonderful job. It's one of those movies that, um, like you said, it's not perfect, but uh, but it's, it's a solid, solid view. Um, I definitely got, um, you know, I wasn't like 100% when I sat down to watch it, but I fell right into the movie again. I go, oh yeah, this is why I love this movie and uh, really enjoyed it. <laughs> no, absolutely, same here. Um, I, I, again, it also has uh, some of the best actors um, of our generation um, back then, you know, 15, 16, well, 20 years ago now. Um, now that I was going to say 15, right? So I've um, got a, <laughs> oh, yeah, that thing called time, it keeps moving on. But no, th- this is very <laughs> yeah. good. Uh, high recommend from me, high recommend from you. Um, same as last week. Um, it, it just has a different kind of play with it. Um, obviously, it's a little bit older, but nothing, its age does not go against it, um, I don't think. Um, at all, and I agree with you that if this were a more modern film, this would be three hours long, um, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also would not <laughs> yeah. be nearly as engaging because you'd be, you know, you'd be exposition to death, um, as it were. But thank God that didn't happen. Uh, and we got kind of like a, a good film that will never be made again, or probably to the level <laughs> of quality that we that we got. So always a thankful yep. thing to have. Um, yeah. I think uh, off and on, I, I called him uh, John Mateague at points, but it's James Mateague. I, I realize that that's the director. <laughs> right on. Um, but yeah, apologies to him if he's out there watching. But uh, yeah, which he's not. But <laughs> yeah, we're 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 uh, coming up here on the end here, and uh, I think uh, I'll, let's do real quick down the line plugging um, of our our please. Go, go subscribe. Uh, we're trying to drive the numbers up. We would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. Um, or check us out, uh, give us a like, a comment. Um, tell us what you think, um, if you liked what we're covering or not, or what are your favorite kind of apocalypse dystopian films? Uh, we've definitely covered a, a handful throughout in our last 230, this will be 230 uh, plus films out there by the time we publish it. But um, tell us what you think. Uh, and also, you can, um, I'll let you kind of take it away with yours, and then I'll dip yep. it back in. Um, 
I'm on Reddit, so on various uh, sub subreddits that will have us. Um, yeah, it's the kind of surprise that the Civil War movie uh, subreddit let us stay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'm on X as uh, McAllister underscore T. So if you want to keep up with our latest videos, and uh, you know, every once in a while I make some odd. A uh, little post, uh, but nothing um, too too out there or crazy. Um, so don't be ashamed to uh, to subscribe to me <laughs> or follow me. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, same thing for me. I'm on Twitter um, X as uh, Apit underscore Inc. Um, you can catch me or Tom you know, whenever we're out there. Uh, and also Apit dot Inc is my little publication of record. Very little boring thing I do for the heavier side of life. Uh, more things I find cool. Uh, but as always, we are the first, the last, the nerddom. Uh, and we uh, mm -hmm. thank you so much for uh, coming and joining us uh, this week. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the Rizzler, call us. Call us. We'll do a collab. <laughs> call us. Call us. <laughs>